move on to the second talk. So the second talk in the session is entitled Towards Understanding the Known Key Security of Block Cipher. The paper is by Elena Andreva, Andrei Bogdanov, and Bart Menning, and Andrei is giving the talk. Ciphers, it's uh, indeed uh, joint work with Elena Andreeva and Bob. <coughs> so, um, known key attacks uh, we will consider here in the sense of uh, what Knoz uh, and Diamond proposed um, at AsiaCrypt 07. And here is our, uh, for our contribution. So, uh, we put forward a notion of non-key security that uh, has been known uh, to be quite a difficult problem, but uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see about the, the limitations yeah, of this notion. Uh, then we show that non-key indifferentiability is meaningful, meaning that uh, attacks on the existing primitives that fall into our model actually imply violations of the security uh, with known keys in that model, okay? which would suggest that it's uh, meaningful. And then uh, that the notion is constructive in the sense that it's possible to actually prove uh, known key security for some instructions. More specifically, we'll be dealing with uh, Pfizer networks and criminal source networks to uh, show constructiveness. Okay, so I will start with a very brief um, background uh, on security models for block ciphers. So uh, the classical model for um, block ciphers was indistinguishability, where you try uh, to distinguish the block cipher uh, from a fixed uh, random permutation, and <coughs> you assume that uh, the key is secret. Though uh, this sort of disregards the uh, underlying structure, that's why uh, people came up with uh, extended indistinguishability, which is quite the same, uh, but additionally, you get um, access to the underlying primitives uh, as adversary, which uh, reflects uh, the structure maybe slightly better than uh, just plain uh, indistinguishability. And then there is indifferentiability. So here we are distinguishing the block cipher not from a single uh, random joint permutation, but actually from uh, the set of permutations, yeah? from uh, ideal side, yeah? where you draw the permutation uh, and you for uh, every key yeah? from the set of all permutations. So it's what uh, the ideal cipher uh, means. And this also assumes some idealized underlying uh, constructions and some help of simulator, but we will see that in much more detail. And here, uh, the starting observation that uh, given this taxonomy, if we want to model the known key attacks, then it might be not that reasonable to deal with those, because uh, we actually know the key we are computing with, and this immediately leads to the attacks in this setting. Yeah? Because uh, indistinguishability implies um, uh, key recovery uh, security. So we might want to deal with uh, the indifferentiability instead and try to find ways uh, how to 
include uh, the non key set. So once again, our goal is uh, to incorporate the knowledge of the key and the model, uh, some ideal unlike primitives such as uh, prime oracles or um, random permutations, the knowledge of the key to the adversary actually, and uh, the knowledge of the key, yeah, of course, also to the block set in the compose setting. So, and this is uh, resulting then in so-called non-key uh, indifferentiability, which I will now introduce, starting with the classical notion of indifferentiability by Maurer et al. from PCC04. So here we have two worlds. This is the so-called compose world, where you have the actual structure of your block cycle well, that might depend on some um, unlikely. Uh, permutation. And in the right world, you have a ideal cipher and some algorithm which is called a simulator, which simulates the behavior of this permutation. So this simulator actually works on the side of uh, the construction, yeah? We're trying uh, to pretend that this world is actually uh, the composable. So it's not. And then the task of the adversary is actually to distinguish between, between those two. And for that, uh, the adversary is given two interfaces, the left interface to the big oracle and uh, the uh, right interface to the small one. And now, in the classical setting, um, the adversary is allowed to choose the key and to forward some uh, queries uh, backwards uh, and forwards for the cipher for the online uh, primitives. And then, again, we want uh, the adversary to distinguish. So, and this model is pretty generic. It uh, allows to model chosen or basically any keys, because in many cases uh, this is not even formulated explicitly for chosen keys. So uh, now what we want to modify in that uh, setting is that the key is known and fixed, uh, but not by the adversary, somebody else. And it's public, yeah? So every entity here actually knows that key, in, including the simulator, yeah? which is important. Which, uh, is not necessarily the case in uh, the classical uh, setting. And then again, uh, the adversary is given two, in two interfaces, and then uh, it does not know which role it is. And then we need to distinguish between them between those two. Okay. Uh, yeah, so it's important that the key is here known, yeah, and and fixed, yeah? and that that strip is not the one choosing. Okay. So um, let us have a look at how uh, some notions are connected. So the general indifferentiability, as uh, it turns out, actually implies known key indifferentiability. In other words, uh, the advantage. Uh, the known key infringibility adversary might have is not more than the advantage uh, the general infringibility adversary has. Uh, but in the other direction, of course, it doesn't hold. And we do have a counterexample. So this basically says that there are constructions which are not chosen key in the fringeability secure, but uh, those constructions are known key secure, yeah? because known key security is a weak notion that it doesn't choose. And here is an example of such construction. So as I will show later, it seems to be uh, known key indifferentiable. 
but uh, in the chosen key setting, it's uh, clearly differentiable. So one way to see it is to observe that if you have uh, two different keys, yeah, then the underlying permutation still remains the same, yeah, and uh, the adversary can actually XOR uh, those keys out. And for two distinct keys, we're dealing with the same permutation. This is one way to see it, or uh, to use uh, some details of our model, there is also another way to see it. And uh, it also involves uh, here uh, composing the cipher. Uh, but here we are using the fact that in the uh, chosen key in, in indifferentiability setting, uh, the key is actually not necessarily known to the simulator, so that the simulator cannot easily compose. <coughs> But it's perfect enough just uh, to have one country example here. So then uh, we can have a look at actual constructions where known key impressibility makes sense. For instance, those are Festel ciphers, and we are generalizing a bit. Uh, a Results uh, Musen and Raman uh, published for balanced files still in ancient grid 07. So here we are dealing with uh, a generalized file cipher with L lines. Yeah, those are of equal widths, and then you do your file uh, iteration using one line and update that one, and then you rotate. So it's something like type 1 or type 3 doing that. But with some explicit key input. It's one construction, and another construction is uh, the other one uh, that people usually consider when proving <coughs> uh, general inefficiency or chosen key inefficiency. Here, you don't have uh, the input of the key for XOR, but basically uh, here instead we have a function that <coughs> accepts some round key, and uh, this input from the line, so it's basically the, the contracting random oracle. It's how you can uh, simulate the explicit uh, key input for this construction. And this has been uh, well studied, at least for the balance case of two lines, yeah, for balance cipher. Okay, now we want uh, to generalize uh, the attack on balance file. <coughs> so here we have the details of uh, their attack. I will skip most of them, but it's important to see that you basically, over seven rounds of the balanced Feistel, can uh, construct a, a relation on plain text and ciphertext uh, given uh, the knowledge of the key. Yeah? A is defined in some way dependent on uh, your uh, specific uh, construction or your intent. So if you can hear choose some values. But yeah, it's important to see that it's important it's it's possible to construct such a uh, uh, relation yeah, between plain text and side text that wouldn't be possible for uh, an ideal permutation at this point. And now uh, yeah it's basically the, the relation and now we can uh, construct a similar thing uh, for more than two lines, yeah? So when we are generalizing our files in the sense that we're taking more lines. And this also increases, of course, the number of runs. You can actually attack, so it's now 4L minus 1. L is the number of your lines in the Python cipher. And it holds for uh, the balance case as well. Uh, 
uh, and it actually generalized. So the overall idea is uh, pretty much the same that you construct uh, some relations on parts of inputs and outputs that you wouldn't be able to construct in the ideal case. Okay. Now, um, we want to see that uh, the existing non k attacks, at least on those ciphers uh, that have um, some idealized uh, components, that they do translate to the violation of uh, the security under the key, uh, under the known key in the notion. And how uh, do we do that? So, we basically observe that um, the distinguisher in those cases uh, defines predicate phi, and then uh, the distinguisher in those attacks uh, makes queries yeah? uh, from uh, some uh, query list, and then uh, the distinguisher outputs one if the predicate holds and zero otherwise. And then uh, the non key indifferentiability advantage is defined as a difference yeah? so between those two values yeah, for the real construction, uh, for uh, the predicate to be satisfied, and for the ideal construction. And since the tag works, we know that this will be one yeah, for the actual cipher. And for the ideal cipher, we can see uh, what it is the bound on uh, the probability will be. And here, you can see an example of uh, a predicate, basically, yeah, that uh, we have some properties on the inputs and outputs. So this, basically, in um, implication that uh, you have then a violation of the model, in some uh, more concrete form. So here we have a statement yeah, that uh, we show that the advantage of the non-key indifferentiability uh, distinguisher is actually at least one minus this value, where QES so is the number of queries the simulator makes to the uh, ideal set, yeah? to the uh, big oracle in the right form. Yeah, it's um, always important to include uh, this um, number of queries for the simulator because if you allow uh, this number to be high, then you are not necessarily getting informative um, uh, statements. Yeah? But here, uh, the uh, number of queries the simulator makes uh, can be actually very small. So this is about that. Now we want to see that uh, non-key indifferentiability is actually constructive. And here we have Two examples, we have the example of a balanced uh, Firestorm with uh, contracting random oracle as uh, your uh, F function, basically. And we know from stock 11 that for 40 runs you have this bound on the general indifferentiability, which translates as we know uh, to be bound on non infringibility, yeah? which means that at least one way to prove non key infringibility is to prove the general infringibility so that the same bound at least holds also for the non key infringibility. That was easy. 
now I want to see uh, some intuition of how to prove even Mansour uh, secure under known keys and this is a specific proof so we are not using uh, the proofs of uh, general interpretability for this construction though there exists some and the, the intuition to see why it's secure is that um, so one way to see it is to observe that if the simulator knows the key, then uh, it can always XOR it to the queries, yeah, to the input uh, and to the output of uh, the query the simulator makes to the big oracle. And uh, in that sense, it will always Compose, yeah? So this is at least the reasoning for one round of even this uh, Similar reasoning uh, holds for more uh, rounds, but the idea is here to see that once the key is fixed and uh, the permutations are uh, different, you are basically dealing with uh, one randomly drawn permutation. And then it's not easy to distinguish it from another random drawn permutation. Yeah, so it's a big idea. Okay, uh, this brings me to some conclusions and open problems. Uh, so in this work, uh, we have presented one way to argue non-key security, but it, it has some limitations. So um, we don't know how to formalize non-key attacks for non-black box underlying primitives. Yeah? So, for instance, for something like um, AES or some other uh, constructions with uh, SP structures inside. And it's uh, also of uh, somewhat uh, independent uh, limitation that the ideal model, yeah, and uh, the differentiability is an example of an ideal model, is that in the ideal model um, uh, the sense yeah, of your security actually uh, becomes void yeah, for small uh, scale underlying primitives. So if you again switch to AES and you have your a bit S boxes, then uh, a proof in the ideal setting does not tell you much yeah, about the security because it will be, in most cases, uh, bound by the size of your unlike primitive. So we don't know how to deal with uh, such cases, uh, and yeah, it would be interesting to see some uh, new ways also to argue non-key security for non-ideal uh, like components, uh, maybe for smaller size. That will conclude it. Thank you. For the uh, Holmes time, the uh, physical, general physical structure for the 16 rounds? Yes. So uh, the Holmes time result is on, uh, so you proved it on rounds. 14 rounds? Uh, it uh, was proven for 14 rounds, I think, yeah. Oh, well, okay. By Holmstein, so. but it's uh, 16 and above, yeah. Okay, so my, oh, okay, I didn't miss. I actually missed it. So my question was that uh, Holmstein is in uh, random oracle model. So the round functions they consider it as random oracle. Exactly. Yeah, and it's exactly the same construction we call uh, here G, F, and R. So that you have a contracting random oracle if you want uh, to account for uh, explicit key input. Yeah. So your F function, yeah, uh, in one round is going from n over 2 plus k to n over 2. Yeah, so it's where you input your key. 
that it, uh, the proof by Polenstein et al. was uh, not considered that explicit input, but uh, it's easily uh, transferable to that case as well. Okay, thank you. Any other question? Okay, if not, let's thank the speaker again.